losing weight, making weight, cutting weight, weight classes, day of weigh-ins, day before weigh-ins. Uh, I mean, these are the things that it seems like are making the rounds right now uh, amongst a lot of the people that like to talk boxing on YouTube. And uh, I figured I'd just kind of throw my two cents in. Um, I try to be realistic about this whole situation. Um, I know that same-day wins probably aren't going to be coming back by virtue of the fact that it it the day before wins make it so that there's less liability on the state athletic commissions on the sanctioning bodies basically everybody involved um specifically the athletic commission who actually have doctors on there that could get sued that could you know you know that could be in a lot of fucking trouble should um a fighter either get injured or die um at the watch under the watch of um you know, the commission, the commission, the doctors, uh, everybody that's involved, all the actual officials. Um, you know, it's been scientifically proven that when you have less fluid, specifically cerebral spinal fluid, the fluid around your that surrounds your spine and your brain, and you're taking impacts like you do in boxing, you know, as opposed to a lot of other weight-cutting sports, uh, bodybuilding, powerlifting, even wrestling, you know, even though you're, you know, you're getting roughed up in wrestling, you're not getting hit you're not getting an impact you know equivalent to a bat or a car crash or you know anything like that hitting you um you know on a dehydrated brain you know that that could cause you know major damage major injury a lot of uh a lot of ring deaths um have likely you know that basically not occurred in more recent years due to the day before wins compared to when they did day of weigh-ins where fighters were still dehydrating themselves. There were fighters that were still cutting lots and lots of weight. Trying to make unnaturally low weights for their body type. For their their natural size. And they would go into fights basically dehydrated. You know they would try to hydrate within the few hours that they had. In order to do so between the weigh-in and the fight. You know a few hours. And in doing so I mean just you know engaging in 12 or 15 round fights dehydrated and taking punches that entire time is you know a recipe for disaster um they still do same day weigh-ins in the amateurs they still do same day weigh-ins in the olympics but in the amateurs in the olympics and so on and so forth they're only going for three rounds and even if they are de well it used to be that if they were dehydrated that you know the impact of the brain wasn't quite as much because they had the headgear of course um, although it's argued that the headgear just uh, makes things worse because then they can take increasingly heavy and longer blows. It's, except for, you know, in three rounds, you're really not going to take as many punches as you would in 12 rounds, for instance. Um, but even there, um, you know, fighters would cut weight. You know, a good example is Rasheed Warren. Rasheed Warren fought at 106 pounds, 108 pounds, and then 114 pounds uh, through the last three Olympics. Over the course of the last three Olympics. And you know of course at 114 pounds. He was a fully grown man. You know a fully grown adult. Uh, as a pro however. He, instead of going down in weight. Which you would think that would be natural for him to do. Since he was made, able to make 114 on the same day weigh in. Several same day weigh ins actually. Because in the Olympics they weigh you several times over. To make sure that you don't go over the weight limit. During the course of competition. You know over the couple of weeks that you're competing. He actually campaigns at 118 pounds. At band weight. And the the one uh, fight night win that I do have for him against Jose Luis Araiza, he weighed 124 pounds on fight night. So that's 10 pounds over what was a quote-unquote natural weight for him to make, at least as an amateur. But was it that natural? Um, was he actually depleting himself to make 114 pounds and the lower weights even before that when he was younger? Was he actually depleting himself and he was only able to make that weight because the fights were only three rounds? So it wasn't as much strain. You know, you're, the first thing to, to really go when you're cutting weight like that is stamina. Um, you know, secondarily, they, it would be like your legs and your reflexes and then, you know, your chin uh, following that. And, you know, chin and reflexes kind of goes hand in hand, though. Um, you know, if you're not going to be able to react to a punch and brace yourself as much, you're probably going <laughs> to take the punch a hell of a lot more forcefully and to more to your, you know, greater damage. Um, than, than you otherwise would have. And you can see examples of that um, with certain fighters. They, they come into fights and they, they're obviously drained. They don't have as much snap on their shots. They don't have as much um, 
snap on their movement. Um, I would argue uh, Kelly Pavlik versus Edison Miranda is a good example of that. Miranda just looked like he didn't have as much snap. I mean, part of that was due to Pavlik pushing him back, but you could also see um, fight night weights. He didn't rehydrate as much as he had in the Allen Green fight, where he definitely looked um, more viable. So, even uh, the 24-hour the weigh-in wasn't quite enough for him. Uh, if that would have been a same-day weigh-in, whoo, man. He would have been in deep, deep, deep trouble. <laughs> but the other reason, too, is um, the fact that fighters will, uh, or the, the promoters, rather, if um, fighters don't make weight and they have to call things off at the last minute, that just makes it worse and looks it makes it look bad or worse for the sport and also is really worse for us, the fans, because if all of a sudden fights get canceled the day of, like literally hours before, or maybe up to 12 hours before, um, you know, there's so the general um, thing with the same day wins is in like, for instance, in the Olympics, I believe it's, um, they usually do for like three to three to six hours, if I remember correctly, uh, before competition. I mean, that's actually standard across, uh, all amateur boxing, but, and then it, it varies with other combat sports with wrestling and kickboxing, Muay Thai, all that stuff, um, but, in any case, it's still hours before, and guys still have an opportunity to rehydrate. It's, of course, a lot riskier, but they can still do so. If somebody's looking to get a weight advantage, a strength advantage, what have you, they're going to get it regardless of if it's to their own detriment or not. And some of them are capable of doing it uh, without the detrimental side effects. You know, And so you can still have guys that significantly outweigh other fighters. Um, and that's not to say that, I mean, even in the days of same-day wins, there were plenty of fighters that were fighting either above or below what was probably natural to where they, where they could fight or where they should optimally be fighting. So, and that even um, goes today uh, with 24-hour uh, wins. Uh, I'd say a couple recent examples are Abner Mars and Leo Santa Cruz, who have basically taken up bodybuilding in order to put on weight, in order to try to compete at higher divisions, because they're going to get paid more at higher divisions, and also they're going to get paid more the more titles they rack up, you know, in a pound-for-pound pound sense. They're going to grow their name, expand their name, and then generally, um, as you go up in weight with each weight class, there's more money to be had there. You know, it's just uh, a, just a general trend. You know, as you get closer to heavyweight, the money obviously gets bigger. And then for heavyweights, the money in general has always been, you know, the biggest the biggest stake um, in terms of uh, worldwide persons. I mean, with, uh, of course, you know, obvious exceptions, you know, guys that are big time celebrities or uh, big time celebrity type fighters in countries that are wealthy. Uh, Japan, for instance. Um, but, I mean, the, I'm going to put a link in the description. It's a pretty interesting link. I'm sure some of you guys will find it real interesting. It's, uh, it's literally a uh, guide for how to cut and make weight. And these are things that guys do not only for day before weigh-ins, but for same day weigh-ins. Um, you know, you can cut six to eight pounds of water. Um, some of that connected to carbohydrates, some of that connected to salt. You can cut about like, almost 10 pounds of shit, literal feces, fecal matter. Um, by emptying your bowels, cut you know several pounds of sweat, which is um, of course you know kind of goes along with what I mentioned before with the uh, carbohydrate connected to water and, and salt connected to water, and then otherwise um, either a combination of fluid restriction or fluid um, hi hyperhydration as well as restriction. A lot of guys they'll drink a ton of water and days leading up to when they're gonna about to cut. Then they'll cut back on that water, and the, their body will keep peeing it out, peeing it out, peeing it out. As well as the fact that, you know, a fighter, if they take a laxative and or a diuretic, that'll just increase the amount of turnover of um, waste product, essentially, that they can relieve them, their bodies of. You know, which equates to um, an easy 8 to 10 pounds of weight loss without the real ill side effects of, you know, a weight cut where it's like you're... You know, you're about to faint like like Eric Morales on the scale way back when, you know, <laughs> where where you're just about to freaking collapse under your own under your own weight, under your own strength. 
due to um, being so dehydrated and depleted. So, and that that's and I mean that's even for just the same day weigh-in, you could pull something like that off. For a day before weigh-in, I mean you could definitely push it even further. And of course, you know, we have evidence of fighters doing that. And then coupled with them not only rehydrating but hyperhydrating to the point where it's like they'll be actually sometimes even overhydrated. Sometimes you'll get a fighter in there that's actually over bloated. Um, they didn't have enough chance to let their body recover the proper degree of electrolytes. There's an electrolyte imbalance there where they're, they're actually, um, they have almost like a mild form of hyponatremia. Um, if you don't have know what hyponatremia is, uh, look it up. It's basically um, death by water poisoning, by watering down your electrolytes um, throughout your body, your muscles, your brain, your heart. And even in mild forms of that, you know, you can have very deleterious side effects being sluggish and so forth. And, I mean, so, some of these guys, while it might be easy to say, like, oh, this guy should be fighting up at this weight class, like, four weight classes above, that's not necessarily always the case. It might just be one weight class above, or it might be two. Um, you know, by and large, for most of these fighters, it's going to be at least one or two. Um, for some of the guys that really push it to the limit, like uh, Alvarez or uh, Chavez Jr., it's going to be, it's probably going to be more than that. Or it would have been more than that before they started moving up anyway. But um, just in general, you know, a lot of these fighters, uh, regardless of whether it's a same day weigh-in or day before weigh-in, they're going to push every single advantage that they can potentially get um, that they see it as an advantage. Because sometimes it's not even really an advantage. Um, a lot of the times these fighters, when they go into the ring, the smaller fighter actually, the, the smaller fighter or the lighter fighter in the ring actually winds up winning. And I'd argue a lot of that has to do with the fact that that lighter fighter was probably in better shape just overall. So them not rehydrating as much is really more um, attuned to their body reacting in the proper manner. Where they're not overhydrating and watering down their electrolytes. Their body was able to make weight cleanly because they're at a, a good body fat percentage for their muscle mass. And they were able to hydrate just perfectly. As opposed to some fighters who may be on the flabbier side. And they'll try to overhydrate themselves in order to gain their weight back. But they're actually kind of watering themselves down. And, you know, making themselves more sluggish than they otherwise would be. Um, simply because they cut a corner. They Instead of cutting more fat than they should have, they cut more water than they should have. And then in overhydrating themselves, they actually cut more electrolytes than they should have. Without replacing them properly. So, I mean, that was a... Uh, little bit of ways to get around it um i'm gonna leave the uh the link in the description for the whole how to cut the weight thing i'm sure for some of you guys that have competed in uh weight class sports before this is no surprise because i mean this is this is, these are things that people have been done, doing for decades <laughs> if not more than a century um in order to make a weight class for a given sport you know and especially for you know people that have in, competed in, you know, things like amateur wrestling, you know, high school wrestling and stuff where, um, you know, you, you'll see guys out of season and they'll probably look completely different than when they're in season and especially different compared to when it's a couple of days before they're about to wrestle at a cl weight class that's probably, you know, 10, 15, 20 pounds below where they would otherwise be very athletic and healthy, you know, where they would be playing basketball or football. 10, 20 pounds higher than they're actually wrestling at. So, that's my piece, and on to the next.